the industry, we seem to have this love-hate relationship with FireWire. There are a number of of devices that recently came out with FireWire connections and then other companies like Apple, which ended up creating FireWire to begin with, it's a trademark name from Apple, decided that they weren't going to do FireWire on all of their iPods anymore. So we go let back and forth depending on whether a device is going to support FireWire or not. And we're in this, this interesting phase to see where FireWire goes. Uh, this is a very standard format. Even though it was created by Apple, it was standardized by the IEEE. So you'll also see this referred to as IEEE 1394. You might also see it referred to as iLink. There are a number of different names that manufacturers have given to it, but it's all the same thing. You could plug in IEEE 1394 connections into a FireWire or an iLink device. It's still FireWire. It's all the same behind the scenes. We just give it different names. There are primarily two different FireWire types. There's a FireWire 400 that runs those particular ports will run at 100, 200, or 400 megabit, and that's a half duplex connection in that FireWire 400. After the 400 came out, there was another speed called FireWire 800 that runs up to 800 megabits per second in both directions. So you get much better throughput for those. And if you've got something like a camera and you're communicating back and forth, that's a, a good one to use for that. You'll also see different connectors for FireWire. You'll see a six circuit, which is a powered type connector. It's a little bit bigger and there's six different pins inside of it. You'll also see these very small four circuit or four pin connections in here as well. Those don't have any power, but they do provide connectivity between devices. And anytime you see FireWire, you can see that there's a a very easy, common way to plug in from your computer to these devices. What's nice about FireWire is that it tends to have its own CPU and its own technology behind the scenes. It doesn't use a lot of resources on the computer of the primary CPU, whereas USB really relies primarily on the CPU that's inside of the computer. So uh, you'll find that FireWire, even though in some cases it has a slower speed, you'll notice that it is more efficient in the way that it transfers data and takes not so much of a load off of your computer to be able to do that. So you have people go back and forth. They love FireWire. Other people will go with USB. At the end of the day, you find the device that you'd like to use. You figure out what kind of port it has. And then you plug into your computer in any way that you can. So just make sure that if you're going to get a FireWire hard drive, that you've got a FireWire port on your computer, or you have a way to add a FireWire port to your computer. It's a little combination you'll have, game you'll have to play in the meantime to make sure that everything matches between what you're buying and what you're able to plug into. On other legacy systems, you'll see these other ports, probably right next to the really old serial port, you'll see one of these really old parallel ports. You don't see these much anymore these days. These were primarily used by printers. Other devices tended to use them just because they were a way to get information in and out of a computer, but it was a very non-standard way to transfer data, for instance. This uses something called a DB25 port. Notice that it's all a female type connection on the back of your computer. These days, all of your printers are going to plug in via USB. They're going to plug in over wireless. You very rarely see this parallel port being used. But if you're in an environment where you have a lot of legacy systems, you have a lot of legacy printers, you're certainly going to have a lot of parallel ports in there. If you're looking at the back of your computer and you see these modular jacks on the back, one of those is probably going to be these days an Ethernet port, an RJ45 Ethernet connection. And it's a port that's either going to that's going to support either a 10 megabit, 100 megabit, or even a, a gig, a thousand megabit type connection right on the back of your computer. And if you look at these two, they look very, very similar. The only difference really is the size of it. The RJ11, which is traditionally used for telephone, is this smaller port. The RJ45 is the bigger. It's very easy to take, for instance, a phone line and accidentally plug it into an RJ45 connection. It'll be kind of loose certainly won't work properly if you're trying to get an, an Ethernet connection via this wire. That RJ stands for registered jack. And so that's where that RJ45 is, the registered jack number 45, registered jack number 11. Just keep in mind that if it's the network interface card, it is an 8-pin connection. It's this bigger port. If you have a modem that's in your computer, like a laptop, then you probably have this RJ11 connection. And that is a 4-pin connection. It's got actually six different ports on here, but only four of them are used to be able to do that modem connection. So that's the difference between those two. Just know if you're looking at the back of your computer, you should be able to tell whether it's for a modem or whether it's for a network connection, an Ethernet connection, just by looking at those. And after a while, you'll be able to discern pretty quickly, oh, that's RJ11 or that's RJ45, just by looking at it and maybe even counting the number of pins that are in there. Many legacy systems also have separate ports for keyboards and separate ports for mice. 
And you'll see them as these types of colored connections. There's actually a very standardized format. There's a PC system guide that was created by a, a Intel and Microsoft. And this design guide set up specifics for colors so that you would always know if you looked at the back of a system and you saw two ports that looked exactly the same. Notice that these are exactly the same type of ports that if it was a purple, it's a keyboard port. This is actually a port type called a mini DIN port. The DIN stands for this, uh, this German Institute for Standards. And the six pin mini DIN is what we are looking at here. If it's purple, it's for a keyboard. If it's green, it's for a mouse. And so that's one way that you can tell. You, of course, if it's behind and the dark becomes difficult, you'll sometimes plug a mouse into a keyboard port and vice versa. But that one's at least easy to figure out. If it doesn't work, you can swap them. Or you can get your flashlight out, pull around back and see, oh, it's green, that's where I need to plug my mouse in. Or if it's purple, that's where I need to plug my keyboard in. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. It's nice that we have the USB connections these days. It's a lot easier to plug in your mice and your keyboard. Let's see what we've learned about I.O. interfaces on the back of our computer. Our first question with I.O. interfaces is which serial interface can support a maximum speed of 480 megabits per second? Well, it certainly wasn't that older legacy serial connection. It had to be the new universal serial bus 2.0. And that's one that's really going to give you some nice speeds. That's the fastest you're going to find these days until the new version 3.0 comes out. Our next question, which interface is commonly used for twisted pair Ethernet? Well, that's one that you'll see a lot on the back of your laptops and other computers. And that's an RJ45 interface. Don't confuse that with the RJ11, which is something completely different. And lastly, what was the standardized name of Apple's FireWire technology? If you recall, the IEEE came up with a standard for this, and you'll see it printed right next to the port on your system. So don't be thrown that it doesn't say FireWire, that it instead says IEEE 1394. And at the end of the day, it's exactly the same thing. You can plug all of them together, and they'll work just fine amongst each other. Well, that covers what we needed to know for this section on motherboard I.O. interfaces and all of the different interfaces that, that you might plug into and you might see on the back of your motherboards. Your job now is to turn your computer around, look at all those interfaces, and make sure you know exactly what type of interfaces there are on the back of your computer. If you'd like to watch all of our free A-plus videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards and much more, you can do that all at our website at freeaplus.com.